Guys, uh, my name is Pat, the marketing department here at Art Storefronts, and we call these sessions Art Business Workshops. And really the premise underpinning all of them is, I'm assuming you guys all wanna make more art, <laughs> make more art, you've got that part covered. You wanna make more money from your art of photography, right? Grow your business from wherever it is to a bigger level. For some of you, it's get out of the hobbyist zone and into an actual business with actual income. For some of you, it was things were rocking pre-pandemic and then all your offline sources got obliterated. Uh, for some of you, you have a legitimate business and you wanna double it, triple it. So um, that's what we're gonna be covering before we get into any nitty gritty and I'm just off today, any nitty gritty details on anything else. And first, let me just give you, why the, do I know what I'm talking about? Why the hell would you wanna listen to me? Um, been doing this for going on seven years now, specifically, how to apply modern digital marketing to actually grow a photography and art business. That's number one. Number two, for the last year, I've been running essentially three of these a week. Some of these with you guys that aren't customers, some of them internally with our customers. The sheer number of artists and photographers I talk to on a week in, week out basis is staggering. I've heard it all, I've seen it all, seen every scenario, every size business, um, everything from zero to huge and down and in between. So. I have very good pattern recognition on the things that people usually get hung up on. And then perhaps most importantly, what really punctuates and brings the whole thing home, we have 5,700 customers. And I have a team within my department here at Art Storefronts that studies their data. We look at the people that are selling the most originals. We look at our customers that are selling the highest volume of originals. We look at the ones that are selling the highest price point originals. What about commissions? Uh, commissions that are available all year long or commissions available limited release? Uh, who's selling the most prints? Who's selling the most classes? Uh, where are their traffic sources coming from? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it Pinterest? Is it SEO? It's never SEO, by the way. Um, so we get to see with real detail, you know, the non BS out there. I get a look at people that are actually selling tremendous amounts of art. We attempt to reverse engineer what's going on. How often are they having sales? How big is their email list? What's their Instagram following? What's their Facebook following? What are they doing in terms of their marketing? How consistently are they doing it? And you put all that together and I feel like I have a very accurate pulse on what is actually getting people from the hobbyist zone to real business zone, which is all that we care about doing. We are here to teach you guys how to build a profitable business and grow it year in and year out uh, and nothing else. So that's that's essentially our ball game. So. In terms of everything that we do um, is art storefronts is a business. We can get into that a little bit later on the call, but there's a layer above that, which is sort of some premises or a business model that you need to understand uh, in order for us to even be able to discuss what it is that we do and how we can possibly help you. So agenda for the session, I'm gonna go into like a quick little rant on sort of these premises, the business model, how this works. And then afterwards we will kick it into Q and A. So the Q&A, you can raise your hand digitally or otherwise, we'll get into that later. Unmute your mic. You can ask me any question you want about your marketing, where you want, are in your business, about what we do at Art Storefronts. It can be about anything, really. And then uh, we'll, we'll just hang on for as many questions as you guys have. If you, uh, as the presentation rolls along, if you have a question about this, that, or the other, and you want some clarification, you can throw that thing into the chat. Uh, I've got some of my team members in here that are monitoring the chat that will respond to everything as we roll along. And if you're one of the fine folks that's watching on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, um, I see your comments. So you can feel free to leave comments as well and I will respond to those directly. So I wanna start off, um, excuse me, we can put my hand off. Apologies for that. I've created this thing to like help, help, help people understand sort of the business model and the premises of this business. And I call it the art selling pyramid. It's a pyramid because I stole it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Not sure if you're familiar with this, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have to sort the bottom blocks before you can sort the top blocks, right? So in Maslow's case, the bottom blocks are physiological, right? We all have to eat, we all have to sleep, we all have to do that every day. Uh, the next rung up is safety, right? And roof over your head, security. Apparently, you're going to start lifting weights, making money, and on and on and on up the pyramid. So I give you uh, the art selling pyramid. And this is absolutely the path to a successful art business in 2021 and beyond. It's very, very important that you get these things right and you understand that these are the rules of the game if you want to make it as a successful artist or a photographer. It's not the only way to make it, but the, for the vast majority, very, very important. The bottom block of the pyramid it's attention, okay? And attention 
is the currency of the land that we live in and those are just the rules and i would love to sit here and tell you that we live in a world where the best art wins the most talented artist or photographer sells the most art it's not the case it is not a meritocracy at first on how good you are at your craft it's instead a meritocracy on how good you are at your marketing okay attention without question is the currency of the land stated another way i know that every single solitary person on this call every one of you has a marketing problem you need more eyeballs uh, to see your work if you want to sell it you need a bigger email list such that when you run a sale you can get that revenue and it's quite literally the currency of the land and you know i i, I come at it a couple of different ways but no different than you know maslow's needs and the bottom block being physiological we all need to eat and sleep every day if you want to build your business, you want to make it as an artist or a photographer, you have to work on attention. It is a quotidian need, a daily need. Marketing is the single solitary biggest problem that every one of you has. And I know this conclusively because it's the biggest problem every single solitary customer I have. The ones that are close to a million dollars a year, it's not a lot, it's a small number. They want to grow that thing to $2 million a year. They need to fix their marketing problem. The ones that are just getting started and literally everyone in between. And, you know, it's... It's a tough pill to swallow that the best art doesn't win. The best art photography that gets seen wins. But a way that I love like taking it out of art for a second, and I sort of hate giving this example, but I give it anyway. If I were to ask you, who are some of the most powerful women in the world? How would you respond to that? There's a lot of ways to respond to it. Do you know who I would say they are? It is the Kardashian-Jenner sisters. It is the Kardashian-Jenner sisters because those ladies understand the currency of the land, okay? Every single solitary one of those gals has a 10, 20, 50, 100 million dollar a year business. One of them just invented a tequila label and now the tequila label is completely sold out and is gonna be like a 25 million dollar business. And we can all argue morally, ethically, whatever about how those girls went and obtained that attention. But what we can't argue is that any of those gals decided to become an artist or a photographer tomorrow, they could be painting stick figures. They could be taking out of focus shots on their, on their iPhone camera and they would have a $10 million a year art business year one. Is that fair? No, it's not. It's terribly unfair, but it underscores that attention is the currency of the land that we live in. With it, you can do anything. Without it, you're not in the game. So marketing is the biggest problem you have. That's the one we need to fix. After we understand attention, the uh, quotidian need that it is that we all need to be working on on a regular basis, we can get into the next block. The next block has two portions to it. It's got an outer portion and an inner portion. The outer portion is one, you need to understand the business model such that you can start building a collector list, okay? And the business model stated succinctly is you guys all need to be selling direct. There can be no one in between you, the artist or the photographer and the end consumer. And that is the way it has to go such that you retain the information on the people that are purchasing your work. If you retain the information on the people that purchase your work, you have the ability to market to those folks in perpetuity, which is one of the most important things, period. You know, I, I look at so many different businesses and so many different niches. And if I was to like place a value on what is an artist or a photography business worth, you know where I would start? What size is their collector list? And what is the health of the collector list? How often have they communicated it? Are they taking care of it? The size of a collector list is quite possibly the number one, number two most important metric that dictates how successful an artist or a photographer is going to be, okay? And <laughs> Philip's laughing. He's like, I'm on camera. I totally see that, Philip. You make me laugh. Um, so I stole the collector list from this book. The concept is originally planted in my head. It's called Don't Be a Starving Artist. The book is awesome. Uh, it's short, great, uh, uh, fantastic lessons in it. Why would you want to read it? because it's by the number one best-selling author in the uh, author artist in the United States, Wyland the Whale Guy, okay? He's got it figured out. He's the number one bestseller. Apparently, it's not even close. This book is super skinny and is just short chapters, like great read. He defines a uh, collector as someone that will purchase in upwards of eight pieces of art from him over the course of a lifetime. So he keeps putting out work. Uh, the work keeps getting more expensive. These people keep going along for the ride and buying more and more and more and more as the time goes along. And I've seen this play out so fundamental, it's, it's, it's crazy. And what happens, let's just keep the, the mass really, really simple. You start building a collector list. You market to the collector list regularly. You're coming out uh, with uh, a brand new collection of art and you're gonna do that, let's say, on a Wednesday. You're gonna release it to the public. It's 10 pieces. On Sunday, 
you email your collector list and you say, thanks guys for your continued support uh, in, in, in for everything that you've done to enable me to live my dream as an artist. I just wanted to let you know I'm coming out with a brand new collection of 10 pieces and you guys get first crack at them. Let me know what you think if you like any of them. And what ends up happening is at first you end up selling one piece, two pieces, three pieces out of the 10. So tw 10, 20, 30, 40% of your, of your works start getting sold before they even get to the public. And as time goes on, your job is to build that collector list and build those sales. And I've, I've seen it as high as 50, 60, and 70% with some of our customers, meaning they'll come out with the new series, they'll tell their collectors first, 70% of it is gone before the public even sees it. And that creates so much FOMO, fear of missing out. It, it, it makes it very, very easy for the artist or photographer in question to sell their work at a higher at a higher clip. And ultimately, talking to hundreds of you guys, looking at all my customers, 99% of you are solopreneurs. You're solopreneurs. You don't have a staff. You don't have a bunch of people helping you with marketing or with sales or with any of the other things. And you're essentially just commissioned salespeople. You create, and then you go out and sell. And if you're effective at selling, then you get paid a commission. If you're not effective at selling, you get paid nothing. Well, when you have a collector list, all of a sudden you go from a commissioned salesperson to a commissioned salesperson with a base salary. You start getting paid just for creating. Start small, 10 grand a year, 20 grand a year, 15 grand a year, and then it just goes up from there. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and on up the chain. And boy, it is, it is, it is as important as anything and, you know, some of you guys are in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s on this call, usually inevitably that's the case, and you've been selling art your entire career, but you never kept the information on who bought your art because you were selling at a gallery, or you didn't realize how important this was. And now you've had this long career of selling art, you're at the top of your craft, but you don't have a collector list. You don't have anyone to market your new work to. And contemplate the differences if you would have, right? Like it's just, oh, it's, it's just so powerful. Once we figure out attention, once we understand the business model, once we are selling direct and building a collector, collector list, there's three ways to sell art, only three. And the best way, number one way, you guys already all know this, it's in person, face to face. Always has been, always will be. The next best way, and I believe, by the way, that every artist, every photographer needs to understand these three different ways and deploy each of the three uh, when, it's, when it's pertinent to do so. The next way, problem with the in person, face to face, you, me, everyone on this call geographically placed somewhere on this planet. We all have to sleep and we're incapable of having 15 conversations at once. So your website solves for that. Uh, you need to have your art up on a website. It needs to be able to take credit card. It needs to be able to merchandise the art. It needs to be able to sell it when you sleep. Um, the number three way, okay, the newest way uh, is the live video in either a one-to-one -one fashion or a one-to-many fashion. Let's cover the, the one-to-one fashion. Let's say I follow Elizabeth there on Instagram and I see one of her pieces and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. And so I send Elizabeth a direct message and I say, Elizabeth, I'm remodeling a bathroom. I've got some wall space. I saw one of your pieces on Instagram. Can we jump on a video call and talk about it? She's like, no problem, Patrick. She sends me a Zoom link. I jump into a Zoom link uh, with Elizabeth. She starts holding up the pieces, merchandising them explaining to me her inspiration. I get to know her. I ask her what that car is with all the sunroofs. And the next thing you know, I purchased a piece, okay? That is the one-to-one -one and incredibly powerful. Almost no artists are doing this. There's a million different ways to get this going and we can talk about that later. The next though is the one-to-many, okay? By which I mean this concept of a live art show. And it's essentially an artist anywhere in their house, a camera is on, they are holding up their pieces and they are having a live art show. It is no different. It can be thought of as, you know, you're in a gallery and you're having an opening and instead of everyone being in there with you, a video camera is in there with you. And that video camera is streaming the session out on the internet, uh, on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and people are tuning in and asking questions and making offers, right? And we sort of really started hammering these in the middle of the pandemic last year. And this particular artist in question over the course of the pandemic uh, he sold 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian, all without leaving his garage studio. And this was all old work that he had piled up in his basement. Since then, we're like, oh my God, those results are staggering. How can we potentially duplicate that? Is it just this guy? Is it just that he's a good artist or he has a good following or whatever? Turns out, no. 
We've run hundreds of them at this point, and I can't even begin to tell you this is the biggest advancement in how art or photography is sold in forever. It is fundamentally changing the way that art or photography sells and moves. This particular gal, uh, her name is Meg. She's a painter from Kansas City. She was moving out of one studio space into another. And during the course of that, we convinced her to run a live art show. She had 82 pieces in this show. Many of them were color studies and sketches and not framed and, you know, one-offs here or there. And, you know, going back to the collector list, she emailed her collector list on Sunday. The show ran on Wednesday. She sold 46% of the show to the collector list before it even went out of the gate. And these, this is like later in the show. These are bigger pieces, but like earlier on, you know, like super light sketches and everything else. So in this one, she sold to 72 pieces for a little bit over $13,000, or I think just under $13,000, because uh, they were smaller pieces. Since then, I mean, I cannot even begin to tell you the range and scope in different niches and different parts of the US and different size uh, followers uh, in different mediums, different locations. Um, <laughs> some people, some people, um, more talented than others, just more people, some people with bigger niches than others. Um, you know, some people, YouTube's loading a little slow today. Come on, YouTube. You know, some, some are photographers, some are wearing gloves. You know, some are terrified of being on video. Some love being on video. Um, you do this and you start to learn things, right? And you get better and better and you start to understand the trade craft for how these things go. And how do you set the price? How do you take payment? What's the most effective way to market it up front? What's the most effective way to market it on the back? How long do you keep the sale running? Um, how do you make sure that two people are not bidding for the same piece at the same time and scream and yell at you when the other one gets it, right? And so we've literally run hundreds of these. We are, we are getting extremely, extremely good. We feel like we're pioneers in this particular space and it is a great space to be a pioneer in. I've never seen so much art move in this process than I've ever seen. Many of these people that ran these for the first time that are everyday artists, everyday photographers, just like you, ended up selling more in one show than they'd sold six months, even on our platform, even with our marketing shops. And you know, the, when, I, when, I, when I say it fundamentally is completely changing the way that this industry works, I'm not kidding when I say this, okay? Everyone is trying to figure this out at once, and you have to understand the permutations of this particular situation. Here's a guy, same guy, longtime buddy, longtime friend of art storefronts. We run a ton of case studies with him. Had a show, middle of COVID, in Canada. Gallery was like, you can go ahead with it. Limited people allowed in, masks, social distancing, the whole thing. So no one could come to the show. But he had painted for six months to get the show out, right? There, so he sold a couple of pieces ahead of time to his collector list. Ran the show. Some people bought the rest. What did we do? The next day, cell phone, laptop, follow him around the gallery. Follow him around the gallery and let everybody be there that couldn't be there, uh, that couldn't attend as a result of COVID. And let me tell you, this is pretty damn close to being there. It is the next best thing towards being there. You are directly seeing the pieces. You're seeing which pieces have the red dot on them and have already sold. He's explaining uh, his inspiration. He's, he's um, taking questions live from the audience. And in this case, also selling a whole bunch of the pieces that he hadn't sold already, right? So uh, it's not hyperbole on my part to say that like the entire art selling world is all trying to figure this out at once. And one of the things that I always do, apologies, I should have this up, Art Market Report 2021. So your industry doesn't have a ton of reports. There's two big ones that come out. Both of these big ones, um, this particular one is by Art Basel and UBS Global. And I don't, I clicked on the wrong link, I apologize. And as a disclaimer, these guys, um, these guys really only survey the top like 5% of artists. So picture it's the pro leagues, but it's a great report. I'm gonna send it to you. Totally want you to check it out. And they have this section, excuse me. They have this section on here, or let me just read them out. Global art market, auction sales, dealer sales, art fairs and exhibitions, online sales, global wealth and art buyers. So the online sales, um, and this is like sort of like a high level, like fancy web page that talks about all the things. It's kind of cool to see. But let me, let me just read this line out. And I quote, chapter five looks at the online art market in the rapid evolution of sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and at the development of online viewing rooms. Uh, and it, talk, it goes on to talk about how in these OVRs, online viewing rooms, a tremendous amount of art was sold to high net worth individuals. Do you know what online viewing rooms are? They are a fancy snooty way of saying a Zoom call. 
no different than what we are on right now. Okay, it's the exact same thing. And it's just profound. It's just profound. It doesn't matter if you are at the very top of the art market. You're one of these ones that are selling more than anyone else. Or if you're at the very bottom or in between, the entire art selling world is trying to figure this out all at once. Okay. There, every single solitary person that runs one of these realizes it's the future and is fundamentally one of the most effective marketing and sales techniques that's come along in forever. And my goodness, is it empowering because every one of you could do one. Every one of you could do one without leaving your house and every one of you could do one today. Today. There's literally nothing standing in the way. And we can talk more about that in a minute. But it's also firmly underscoring everything that we're doing as a business. And so this is our, this is our latest and greatest. It's in beta right now. And you know, you run a bunch of these things, okay? And you start learning things like, what's the easiest way to take payment? What about the people that couldn't watch the show live? Um, you know, how do you, how do you get it so that, that when something sells, uh, uh, everyone else is made aware of it and you don't have to do anything. So this is our new live art show page. Just, just design these. And I realize it's like, it's really hard to get my customers to run these. And why is it really hard to get my customers to run these? Because I get it. No one wants to be on video. Being on video is terrifying. No one wants to do it. You're scared to do it, right? Well, I don't have the equipment. You all have the equipment as a cell phone. That's all it takes. And Sterling, you definitely need a new camera. That thing's not focusing. <laughs> so it certainly needs to use a cell phone when he does it. But you guys all have the equipment to do it. But I need to get you to do it. It's like one of the primary things I have. Like, how do I encourage my customers to run these if they're the future? And so we made this page. And what's really cool about this page, I designed it. There's no header. There's, no, there's nowhere to click on this thing anywhere except be in the sale. This is his show. It already ran. The show ended or the show's still going. The sale's still going. And, and so it gives you a way to embed the video for everyone that didn't see it. You literally, to make these pages, you log in. You drop your entire folder of pieces. And he shot all these with his camera. You could have shot it with your iPhone. There's nowhere to click on them. They don't go big. I don't need them. He showed them off in the show, right? And so you drop all of the images in a folder. Automatically, the grid populates. All you have to do is title them and price them. You don't even have to do anything else if you want. You want to give the sizes? Great, give the sizes. You want to give the media types? Great, give the media types. Doesn't matter if they're originals. Doesn't matter if they're prints. There are, there are prices, and you can see when somebody clicks buy now, and look at how cool this is. You don't even leave the page with the buy now. It's instantaneously side drawer, boom. You're able to purchase. You can use Apple Pay, Google Checkout, all without leaving this thing. And you can see I have a couple things in my cart. And then the minute, the minute it's sold, it's sold. And so, you know, people are looking at this that are, that are and you're, you know, you're, you're broadcasting live to Facebook, to Instagram, to YouTube. And where, do you, where are you going to send the people? So you send them to this link. They can come on and purchase. The people that come after the fact that are watching the show are like, oh, my God, this whole entire thing is almost sold out. Uh, what am I going to do? i got to get one, right? And so it creates the same FOMO, the same red dot thing that you see in a gallery, right? Like when you have a gallery show. So phenomenally, phenomenally important. Um, to understand this and absolutely the future of art and we can get way more into it. Uh, I'm actually running a huge contest on it that I'll tease, uh, that I'll tease later in the Q&A. Okay. Um, the final block of the pyramid, it's everything else. It's everything else. Do you guys have a, uh, a, a retail uh, a channel that's working well for you? Fantastic. Keep it going. I don't love the gallery relationship. I think it's exploitative. But if you are getting paid, keep that going. If you're doing the show and fair circuit, fantastic. But it's all got to be in addition to working on your attention, uh, to understanding the business model, building a collector list, to understanding the three ways of building art. And it doesn't matter if you're in a brick and mortar gallery, if you're in an online gallery, Etsy, Etsy Saatchi, Redbubble, Fine Art America, any of them, um, or you're doing the show and fair circuit. I love the show and fair circuit, especially now that like COVID's quieting down a little bit. Uh, God forbid before it heats back up. So all of those are just in addition. And if you understand that pyramid and then you chalk in the last thing, which is perspective, I have been running these calls. I'm not kidding for over a year. I talk to so many of you guys on a week in, week out basis. And let me tell you what I see. People routinely in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and even 90s coming in on this call. You guys are not a bunch that goes through midlife crises. Once you're an artist or a photographer, you're an artist or a photographer for life. It never changes. You're, the way you guys are wired, this is just who you are. It's what you do. There might be times when you work it harder than other times, but it never changes. And so have the perspective if you never built a collector list and you didn't understand the business model and your art's not up on a website, you got a lot of time to get this right. You got a lot of time to get it done. And if you do and you stay at it consistently, there has never been a time ever uh, a better time to be an artist or a photographer selling direct. We really believe that this industry is going through its 
blockbuster Netflix moment. It's going through its Uber taxi cab moment or taxi cab Uber moment. Uh, it's just being disrupted. The gallery model, which is so damn exploitative to artists, is just getting obliterated. They're going out of business left or right. And so you, you want to make money. You want to be successful. You have to get the pyramid right, and you have to get in and get started on your marketing. And let me tell you, if you've never done it, first year is going to suck. It's going to suck. I don't sugarcoat it at all. I have to teach you how to market. I've got to teach you how to capture emails. None of you are doing that. I have to teach you how to email the emails. Almost no one's doing that. I have to teach you how to market regularly and consistently. And then I have to get you to run sales when the time is right. How do you announce this? How do you tease a sale? How do you announce the sale? What does the discount look like? What is the incentive plus scarcity to get people to actually take action? And all of the various different things. But once you learn it and once you start at it and once you do it consistently, year after year, the business will grow. Almost no artist or photographers. One, you all suck at marketing. I'm sorry, it's the truth. Two, you all hate it. You would prefer someone else did it. Uh, three, the ones that are doing it are not focused on the highest ROI marketing techniques. How do I know that I have 5,700 customers? I look at the data. And then finally, no one does it consistently, okay? It's like the uh, artists and photographers all talk about marketing sort of like that people that talk about like a gym membership January 1. It's my New Year's resolution. I'm going to get fit. What ends up happening? By March, it's cold outside and you're not going to the gym anymore. That's what it is, right? And many of you are like, he's right. That's been my story consistently over the last 20 years. This is going to be my year. I'm really going to start marketing. I'm going to do it. No one's given you the perspective of how long it takes. You went hard at it for three months. You're like, I'm not getting the results that I want. You quit for a year. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. So we believe that we offer a different way of doing things, a way of doing things that many of you have never done. And if you feel like you want to shift gears and try something different, it's a heck of a time. And why is it a heck of a time right now for all the aforementioned uh, uh, subjects? And don't take this cynically. I don't care if you do all of the above somewhere else and not with art, art storefronts. More art is sold traditionally in Q4 for the majority of my customers in one quarter. Q4 starts in October. It ends at the end of the year. And it is Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the whole whipped up holiday buying frenzy. For the people that market successfully starting now the, through the rest of summer to Q4, stand a chance to do very, very well. More art is traditionally sold in that one quarter than the other three combined. But if it's the marathon, and it is, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that whole season, Christmas, even New Year's, if you're gonna run a marathon and you wanna be successful at it, the first race you run can't be the day the damn marathon starts. You have to get started now. You have to start training, stretching, doing some short runs, icing down after the fact, the whole thing. So that's the analogy. It's what we do in a nutshell is we teach you to do all of that. I think it's a fantastic time. And again, don't take it cynically. If you sign up with us, great, fantastic. If not, contemplate what's going to happen. I'm an eternal optimist. I, I really hope this Delta is just scaremongering and it doesn't come back. But if it does come back and we go into some protracted state of lockdown, what happened the last time that happened? Art and photography demand as a result of being inside of the home decor segment was at an all-time high. Everyone was at home. Everyone was at home, no one was leaving. They were all finally so sick of their white walls. They were all finally on Zoom calls with nothing behind them that they're like, I gotta get something on the wall. I gotta get something cool. And so art and photography was a winner of the pandemic, a significant one. Everything home decor just exploded, right? Furniture, office chairs, streaming equipment, you know, uh, uh, putting swimming pools in the backyard because everyone's at home. If Delta comes back, what's gonna happen again is art demand is gonna be at an all time high this Q4. And if those lockdowns come back again, and all of the venues in which you can buy art or photography are closed, the retail galleries, uh, the show and fair circuit is toasted, you have, you have this delta between all-time high demand and a paucity, a scarceness of the places where you can actually get it. So who won in that? The artists, the photographers that were marketing and knew how to market and knew how to reach people digitally. So that's the ball game. That's why the live art shows are so important. So that's my story, sticking to it this point going to open it up to q a a um, couple of different ways to do this some ground rules one if you're one of the brave ones with a camera on if you raise your hand one of somebody from my team will see that yep doug so you're in the queue um and i can unmute you ask whatever questions you want we'll get into a little q a we'll go from there uh if you've got a question and you don't want to be on camera you don't have to be on camera i hate being on camera i get it you can ask audio only that's totally fine uh, if you want to just throw your question in the chat and do it that way um, you can totally do that. And by the way, at the bottom of your Zoom bar is like a little smiley face with a plus mark to it and says reactions. 
you click that thing and you can digitally raise your hand. And that's really helpful to me because it just gives me a cue of like, okay, this question, this question, this question, this question. So you can either raise hand if, I, if you're on camera, um, otherwise we'll go down that way. And again, I see all of your comments on Facebook, don't worry. Um, I can tell you, I can, I can respond to those so you can just leave me questions that way. Um, let me get that off the screen. Doug, you're up first, uh, let's go. Oh, you'll have to unmute too, Doug, by the way. It's the mic icon in the bottom left-hand corner. And if you just click it, or I'm gonna, hold on, da, da, da. Yeah, it says, did you get it? Are you there, Doug? Try it again. Little microphone icon, bottom left-hand corner, all you have to do is click. Uh, yep, gotcha. There you are? Yep, gotcha. Okay, good. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm just kind of starting a business. I, uh, mm -hmm. me and my roommate, since COVID started, are doing a uh, COVID project. And we're visiting all the state parks within the Northwest that we can find and get into safely. Okay. Uh, you know, masked and whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I'm building a website around that, or we are, and uh, with our combined photos. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a... I'm um, using a Samsung Galaxy S, uh, the newest one, mm -hmm. uh, plus the, the top line, mm -hmm. uh, as well as my Canon. Um, I seem to get better pictures out of the Samsung when I do the Canon. Love that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, starting a website, uh, getting pictures on it, getting pictures organized. Organizing is really hard. So that's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do right now is just get everything organized, put together mm -hmm. uh, so that I can get the site up because I do have one on Squarespace. Yep. That's yeah. not, so, that, that, that shouldn't be your number one priority. Your number one priority should be getting prints made of the, what you think are going to be the top selling um, oh, okay. photos that you've taken so far. And then okay. everywhere you go, show people what you've got. Okay. Because you're still going to bump okay. into people and all of those, all of those various different, uh, locations and each and every one of those situations gives you an opportunity to to start selling it and getting it out there oh, yeah. and seeing if people yeah. want it. and i work on stories for the pictures and stuff too so love that yeah so it's it's been a lot of fun i mean it's been something to do you know mm -hmm. one day out of the week <laughs> yeah so yeah but good for you i love i love the idea conceptually well it's you know it's just the way it is you know i live in seattle so I, you know most beautiful place in the country to live you know as far as photography um uh, between here in idaho and and uh, portland oregon um yeah it's just stunning up here i've lived yeah. all over i've been semi-driver there's not anything in the country i've not seen mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's hard to document from the seat of a semi so yeah i'd say this so. has been a different different experience and i've loved every bit of it i've been taking photos for 50 60 years oh i love that <laughs> so yeah i've got a backlog of photos Yep. Got to, got to, got to get them up and get selling, but make yeah, sure, you know, make, I do. Thank yeah. You. yeah. 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 And I would say there's, um, there's a link in the chat and we'll keep putting it in there, which is so you can subscribe to the podcast. I would definitely subscribe to the podcast. It's all free and it'll continue to give you tips as you kind of go on that journey to figure yeah, out and which, which icon is that I'm, I, so there's a chat button at the bottom of your zoom window. It looks like a little is that bubble. The people? Uh, it's not the people it's two to the right of the people or one to the right the of the yellow people. up the yellow up it says chat well you know my so, screen for some reason yeah, yeah yours is, some, some people's a little different don't worry we'll we'll email this, it to you after the fact i should this I, is running I, through yeah. a mac so and i oh, should no, not, i'm on i'm on the microsoft right now so gotcha gotcha and, and and i should mention too that um all the links all the everything that we mentioned what i do is as soon as this thing ends we put the video on a web page we put all the links that we talked about for the day you know kind of show yeah. notes if you like and we'll send cool. that to you so it'll all be in there for you yeah well this camera's awful isn't it <laughs> yeah, it's all good it's good enough to run a live art show dog i'll tell you that hey i got better cameras than this though <laughs> I, I, I bet you do i bet you do this is just a computer so yeah Okay, that's all. You know, that's all I need. I just, like you said, I need to do some prints. I have done some prints. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, uh, none of them behind me, but uh, all over the other uh, part, other part of the house. So, uh, what kind of uh, printing do you recommend? I mean, some fade. I've had some photos fade. Over oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That can definitely. That can definitely. Definitely happen. 
um, you know, we're, we're integrated with, so what we offer is POD, it's print on demand. And the way that it works is you sign up and you get integrated with one of our two print houses. It's Bay Photo on the West Coast. It is Graphic Dimension on the East Coast. And we sort of we sort of argue that photographers need to, to it turn on at least five media types. Uh, one, you need a fine art paper. Two, you need uh, a gallery wrap canvas. Three, you need metal, which is kind of the, the hot kid on the block. Also acrylic, oh, which I is number it. four. And then we also like talking about wood too, because actually wood is getting pretty popular. And the way that it works is once you integrate, um, an order comes in, uh, you get paid, printer gets paid, printer prints it, uh, boxes it, slaps your logo on the outside of the box, ships it off, and you don't touch anything. You're not involved oh, in the transaction. I like no touch stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what was the one on the West Coast? Bay Photo. I'm sorry? Bay Photo. Bay, like a bay. Bay, yeah, B-A-Y? Yeah. Yep. You can check them out. So they do drop shipping. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure, Tom. And enjoy, enjoy the uh, COVID park tour. Okay. Next up is Sterling. Go ahead, Sterling. Yes, thank you, Patrick. Uh, good presentation. I apologize for my lousy camera. Oh, no worries. My, uh, mine, mine's done that a couple of times, too. I blame my kids. Let me, let me, I got a couple of questions. I currently have a website. I do international workshops. My workshop business is, is doing quite well. We do live Zoom classes as well as in-person classes. Awesome. So that, that well, end of my business is... What are, you, what, what are you teaching, just out of curiosity? I'm teaching specifically watercolor, but occasionally uh, abstract on paper. These are uh, everything from landscape to abstract expressionism. Awesome. And I've, I've been doing it for a number of years, and it's doing quite well. And we, we recently, a year ago, got into Zoom classes, which are also doing well. So I have all the Zoom class set up for these these, these uh, live shows like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. my, my questions are just a couple of things. That I, I currently have a website which is, which is tailored specifically to attract people and advertise my workshops. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, like I said, it's a good website and it seems to be working quite well. What I'm looking at right now are ways to really market my original pieces of art as well as uh, prints of my work. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing I'm looking for with uh, possibly coming into our storefronts. Uh, I know there's a there's a difference in prices as far as what plan you buy from a thousand dollar plan, <clears throat> I believe, to the twenty seven hundred dollar plan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you explain to me just uh, the difference what, what you get with a thousand and what you get with a twenty seven hundred dollar plan, or is this the right platform to discuss that? Yeah, it's it's well, you requested a demo and talked to them already, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're a little bit more um, up to speed with the various different pricing. I sort of stay out of it just because it it's it's how the marriage works between marketing and sales in this company. But the the the, the massive difference is is twofold. One, really, what you're paying for when you pay the thousand dollars down for us is marketing education for life, and it's the most important thing. And it doesn't matter if you're on the top plan or you're on the bottom plan; you get a hundred percent of the marketing advice, and and that's critically right. important. That's number one. Number two, the bigger plans, sometimes on the website, there's a few extra bells and whistles, um, and some extra features, which they'll sort of go into detail if, they, if you do the whole demo. But no matter what, on all of it, you get all the marketing bells and whistles. And then a lot of times what they do too is they'll group like three year, four year, and five year plans. And for some unknown phenomenon, we, we see this tendency where, and, it, and it's totally just worked out this way serendipitously, but you know, you, you, you look at the landscape of artists out there and, and photographers and like, what is what is the last 10 years look like? You jump from one website to another website to another website to another website and it's either free or it's $29 a month. And it's like, where you aim your wallet, you aim your commitment, right? When it's cheap, you're like, okay, it doesn't matter. I've just got this cheap website. Well, when these people go all in and they buy these big plans for like three years, four years and five years, it's effectively them burning the boat right? It's like, there's no way I'm going back to what I was doing. I'm going to start grinding on my marketing and really work hard. That being said, go with whatever one you're comfortable with because you can upgrade or downgrade at any point in time. And right now in the very near short term, the extra bells and whistles that you get on the website, you can't even use them because you have a website no one's coming to, right? In your teaching website, you've got a great one. And by the way, you know, you send me an email afterwards because maybe we'll sponsor it, right? Like, you know, you can drive leads to us. We'll, we'll give you another revenue source. Um, so that's something we could potentially talk about offline, but I love that you have that revenue source going and I'm blown away by a few of our customers that, that do a really, really good job. We, we have one gal named Betty Kraus. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she, she does teaching sort of an abstract, um, 
and and does just tremendously well with them tremendously well and she throws them in her store as a regular product item and then just does private zoom sessions with like groups of like 30 or 50 at a time but it it's it's cool to be able to have those uh, upside downside your whole audience is artists <laughs> and artists don't usually buy other people's work right so yeah those are the differences well that, that's the whole problem most of my students uh they don't uh, that attend my workshop. I, I do sell pieces or demo pieces for my students, but mm -hmm. they're getting ready to learn how to paint their own, not to buy mine. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly. And I've right. sold stuff in galleries for twenty and thirty years. I'm talking about you know storefront galleries and yep. Uh, yep. brick and mortar, and I've done pretty well with that. But now I've got a like you said, a lot of the galleries are going out of business. They're harder to find, and yep. uh, the ones that I do find are not taking any new work because they can't sell the work they already have. It's a, it's a, it's so a hundred, it's a hundred percent. But it's yeah, it's. I want to get my originals out in front of collectors and decorators. Yeah, you have you have more ways to win than most too, because what will happen if you do sign up is we'll start teaching you to be an effective marketer, way more so than you are now. And there's a million different little pieces, and you know what you'll be doing is you'll be bolting that marketing know-how both into how to grow your fine art sales as well as how to put more butts and seats in your classes. It's just modern digital marketing that that we specialize in, and you know it's it's like anything else. You, it, there's a lot to learn, right? Right. So one last question, very quick. So I, I, if I if I get a website, they watch storefronts. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I should be able to pretty easily just link the, my current website for my students. Also link into the oh, yeah. storefronts oh, yeah. website. Correct. Oh yeah, all day. And, and and not only that, like you know the the you remember from the, the top of my presentation about attention. I'm not right. kidding when I say it's 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 the currency of the land, right? And so you now have this website that you had in the eyes of Google for a long time. It's established, right? You have traffic driving to it. So the last thing that I want you to do is split the attention. I want you to put your fine art site right there. Like, let's say it's sterlingedwards.com. I want your art storefront site to be store.sterlingedwards.com, right? So you keep all of it under the same roof, right? And, you know, it, 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 it's sort of like the, you know, momentum is such a, a huge thing too. And despite the fact that you don't have a ton of fine art buyers in your audience, you still have a ton of people that know, like, and trust you. So I want you to just combine all of it under one umbrella and just push forward with all of it at once. And you'll find, despite the fact it's a bunch of artists and photographers following you, they do like, they do comment, they do share, okay? And what that does is on your regular posts is it gives them a little bit more uh, visibility, right? And it's much harder to go from zero to one than it is to go from three to five, which is what you're looking to do. So I would combine it all under one roof, start pounding on the marketing. And like I said, you'll end up applying the marketing acumen that we teach you to both businesses. Sounds good. Right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my, my pleasure, certainly. Thank you. All right, Elizabeth, now I get to find out what that killer sunroof car was. You'll have, to, you'll have to unmute. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, there we go. Got it. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, it's a Road Ranger or a Range Rover. Yeah, I just, I, there's, I'm just enamored with like the multiple different sunroofs and I've been able it's to It's a at. really sweet car. It's been a really good car. So awesome. And we went and we went and sat in a new one and I'm like, I don't feel any more special in a brand new one than I do the one that just crossed over 100,000 miles. So we're going to keep it. It's a good car. Awesome. Amazing. I wanted to get in the new one and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yeah. But I didn't. I had no feel. Okay, my question. Um, I have a list here, so yeah. I'll try to be quick. No worries. Um, how long should a live show be? What's like a good before you start losing people? What's a good time frame? That is that is a problem for a later later on down the line. You just need to turn the camera on and go. Doesn't matter. Turn the camera on and go. Yeah, you don't, okay. you, you, and, and, then, and honestly, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You honestly will okay. never, you won't know until you get like 10 of them in the water and you start figuring it out. Well, because I like, I'm terrible on like, I do Instagram stories. My family all tease me. Everybody thinks I'm ADD. And I'm mm -hmm. like, nobody would ever characterize me as that mm -hmm. in real life. But somehow I get on uh, live and I just like ramble and I'm nervous and I can't yeah. see people. And I've actually done a lot of public speaking. But not having like the faces of an audience, you mm -hmm. just don't know how to read your crowd, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I bought, I invested about $2,000 in really nice size gallery wrapped prints, not with the intention of actually selling those that came to me, but actually doing a live show and categorizing them by, you know, like a color series or a color collection. Mm -hmm. And so the live show is something that I'm looking at doing. And Wonderful. so my other question is, is can you like record a show because they are gallery wrapped prints there's not a you know up to 25 of each but then you record a show and then just share that show 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. okay 
So that's my other question. And then the other question is how often should you do a live video show? So once way- a week, new collection. I mean, I paint a lot. Mm-hmm. I've been painting for 30 years and just my background is I actually come from a marketing background. Um, but I also had my own interior design retail. I had two big stores. And so I never, and my kids were like, mom, you should take pictures of this. You need to save this stuff. But I would just like find a hole on my wall in my store and go, I don't have time. I think I'll paint something. And then I had clients that I would commission paint and I'd paint furniture and murals and all that stuff. But it was like a different season in my life. It was for specifics. And now I'm in retirement and it's like, oh my gosh, I can paint every day and actually have a real business. Yeah. And so awesome. now that I'm like, I'm trying to treat myself like I would my own marketing client, which is not easy. No, it's definitely not easy. You know? so it requires... It's easy to talk about somebody else, but not yourself. Oh, so trust me, I know that it's, it, it's going like to require a shift. On, so I'm like trying to learn and grow and I've been kind of watching what you guys do mm-hmm. and you know like thinking gosh should I sign on I don't know I'm still thinking about it maybe I'll pop in on a show because I actually have joined a couple other webinars or zoominars mm-hmm. whatever you call this and I sit there and I listen and I'm like I've been in marketing for over 30 years I mean I went to the Seattle Art Institute when cutting and pasting was an exacto knife yeah. and I've had a dual career in marketing and then retail and interior design and I listen to these people and I'm like they're so full of crap yeah I know they're not really giving information and they're having people buy into this stuff I feel so bad for artists but I will say right now you're the first person I've listened to that I've stayed the whole time oh I appreciate that yeah yeah and I think that you know you're giving a really good presentation whether someone's paid a buying customer or not. And I, I really appreciate that. So thank you. I totally appreciate you saying that. And, and, and just to underscore, you know, it's like, I make this joke with my team internally, but it's like, it's sort of like we all live in a town and, mm-hmm. and everyone's isolated in the town and there's only one bank. And yeah. the, I get to like see the person that's driving around with the brand new Mercedes, but then I also mm-hmm. get to see their bank balance, right? And it's like, right. this person's got the Mercedes and they have a dollar and thirty six cents in their bank account. Okay, a complete mm-hmm. charlatan bullshit artist, and I get oh, so infuriated oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. by all of that that I really everything that we do is like, did someone has someone been successful using whatever the source is, whatever the marketing technique? If right. not, right. then I'm telling everyone to stay away from it like the plague, right? Like yeah. The, yeah. It, the, the 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 advice that we give. Is it really good? Yeah, it is. Is it is it the highest ROI marketing activities? Yeah, it really is. But you know what's the most mm-hmm. effective thing out of it is the mm-hmm. stay in your lane advice. It is yep. the look. I this is the lane. I know this is the lane because I have fifty seven hundred customers and I get to see their bank balances and everything right. on the outside of the lane are shiny objects. And people will be coming mm-hmm. on and like, well, what about this, this, and this? No, no, no one's making any money with this, this, and this. If they do, yeah. I'll hear about it first. I'll learn it and I'll teach you. So. We yeah, can, and so, we can help you I, so my, my other question, and it's piggybacking on, on one of the other questions, mm-hmm. is I have uh, my website is rocking. I'm selling art. Mm-hmm. I'm not selling as much as I'd like to because, you know, I, I have this idea that I'm going to be as successful in art that I have been in marketing, mm-hmm. my, you know, in marketing strategy and marketing and in my design business. Yes. And, um, but again, it's very hard to market myself. So my question is, is when someone signs on and I tried to understand your answer, but I was looking at something else. I don't know. I talk fast. Do you yeah. merge? How do you merge? How do you, you know, how do you maintain your independent identity with your website if you are to merge with your company? So you own everything. Like we're software, but it runs on your URL. So, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you've got, elizabethtraub.com, right? Yep. You, can, yep. you can either point that at your art storefront mm-hmm. site or you can put your site on store.elizabethtraub, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you can combine them all or not any, any combination in between, but you own everything with us. That's, okay. that's part of the ballgame. Tr- trust me, mm-hmm. you, you need to request a demo. We can help you significantly. You know, Sin- yeah, no, I need help. That's why I'm here because, yeah. you know, I can, like I said, I can rock a marketing campaign for a national brand my own i've i've worked really hard the last Mm -hmm. four months and i'm like oh my gosh this is so hard i need help yeah and i always when i would run campaigns for their companies i had a marketing team and so i may have developed the creative the strategy but then i had other people doing all the executing and i am doing it all and i'm like i need help 
Yeah. So we, I should also mention we have a full blown in house agency too that you so. can you can leverage. Yeah, no, you want I've been well. I've been I've been scoping you guys out for a few months and yeah. trying you know looking at different companies, talking with different people, and I think you know number one definitely you have a company you want new clients you want sales you know for just sure. like we want sales and art and I value that and honor that. But I don't want a load of crap either. I want people who actually have been in this space, know what they're doing, and are not creating shiny things to grab hold of. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. yeah. We can help. I'm telling you. Okay. Well, that's all the questions I have. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Elizabeth. I feel like there was a question that I didn't answer in there. Oh, yeah. Just, no, just, my, no, my three questions yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I, I, I got him. I got him. I got him. So, got him. Okay. the thing with the live art show is every time somebody runs their first one it's uh -huh. it's some mix of oh my gosh i was so nervous i completely dropped something the dog came in i spilled wine but it was kind of fun uh and you know they're they're like that was awesome i really enjoyed it and then the response is they asked me like how many do i need to run and i was like wonderful now go run a thousand okay because they are absolutely full stop the future and mm -hmm. there okay. are there are so many intricate in and out and moving pieces and none of it matters the only thing matters is just getting the reps and sets in. it's like the you know how do you get to carnegie hall yeah practice right um, you know the book that you I, I wrote down the name of the book and 20 years ago i read a book called if you can talk you can write because yeah. i'm like oh my gosh marketing is moving into this social space i need to become a better writer because in the old days you came up with one rocking tagline and yeah. then the company used it for six months so true so and true. so, you know, and that was a little skinny book and I found it at a garage sale and that book turned around how I wrote for clients. And so I'm going to order that book that you, I wrote it down. I forget the name of it, but yeah, it's like one little artist. piece of information, awesome. you know, take notes from people who have done well. It, it, exactly. You know, like find the it's actual like when success. Somebody asked me, you know, how do you stay fit and trim? I look at them and I'm like, first off, I'm about 25 pounds overweight. Never ask how to lose weight from someone who's 25 pounds overweight. I always say that because yeah. I'm not fit and trim, but I've had five children. So people think, whoa, what'd you do? You know, but my point is, is never ask questions from someone that doesn't have a track record of success. Well said. Great lesson in life there. That is for sure. And a, and a serious problem in this industry, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope to see you inside, my dear. I enjoyed talking to you. Okay. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay. Juan's telling me it's Trevor and then uh, Leon. Did I already get Trevor? I don't know. Why don't we find you, Trevor? All right, Trevor, I'm unmuting you next. Can you hear me? Yeah, gotcha. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I, I had a couple questions, mm -hmm. um, and some of them you've kind of touched on, but I'm wondering if i can get a little bit more specific yeah please um so on these live shows and stuff um you were talking about youtube and you mentioned just doing a live show um through youtube mm -hmm. um but i'm curious about like the following you need for something like that because zero. I, zero. I don't zero you don't need anyone so Early on, the bar for entry is just do one no matter what. I don't even care if it goes live, just record it because what that's going to do is you're going to go, oh, that wasn't that difficult, right? But once you start running a bunch of them, you, you start to learn the dirty little secrets of them. And you know what the dirty little secrets are of them? Everyone thinks that the live art show itself is the main meal, right? Is the steak, right? Is the lobster that you're having for dinner. Nothing could be further from the truth. We're not doing that. We're ordering all appetizers or we're at a tapas bar and we're all eating tapas. And, and what are the various different tapas? How you announce that you're having a live art show. When you open the store for the live art show. Yes, running the sale itself, but yes, everything you do after the fact, the whole thing is a recipe and it just goes da, 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 da. And the live art show is one small little piece. But what happens is why the results are so staggering is that especially in this little COVID world that we're in is like, all of you guys have attention out there in one format or another. And some of you can start on the small end of things and it's friends and family. And then for others, it's friends and family and a decent following and on and on and on. It goes up a little bit. And they haven't seen you face to face in a long time. You've never merchandised your work. You've never shown your personality. You've never been real. You never talked about your inspiration. And every single solitary time we do one of these things, like, you know, I, I, I'm seeing, I'm not kidding. I'm seeing results like, several tens of thousands of dollars when normally before the artist 
year to date was like at $3,000. And I look at that and I'm like, that's a massive disconnect. And I realize that anytime you come up with a new marketing technique that's this creative, there is always low hanging fruit, right? There is always an arbitrage early on for the ones that do it. So I just want you to do one. After you're done doing one, then we're gonna work on how you get it in front of more and more eyeballs, right? But what you'll find is that people are way more bonded to you because you're actually merchandising your work for the first time. Unless you've had a gallery show, you just don't do it. Unless you're doing the third and shows, you just don't do it. And even if you do, the vast majority of people that follow you have no idea, right? Like in your case, like college friends might be like, holy crap, I didn't, I didn't even know he was doing stuff right now. I'm gonna buy one, right? And, and also too, all artists and photographers out there, and this is just a great point in the live art shows, period. We all, we all think in our heads that we create work and everyone out there is just ready to buy it at that moment in time. So all we have to do is market it and there's a bunch of people out there to buy it. Nothing could actually be further from the truth. The way that it works is like, think about fishing, right? And everyone thinks as an artist or a photographer, as a marketer, that when you go and put your marketing message in the water, all the fish, and so your marketing message, let's just say is your fishing rod and we're out in a boat and see, Everyone thinks the fish are right underneath the boat and nothing could be further than the truth. Sometimes the fish are 3,000 feet down. Sometimes the fish are 3,000 miles away. And sometimes they're up at the boat. The only way that you catch them is if your marketing message is in the water, you're fishing when they come up to the surface. And so what these live art shows do is you weren't doing anything then. You weren't running a sale. You weren't sending an email. All of a sudden, you're live on the socials. All of a sudden, you have a video in the water. And guess what? There were people that you didn't know. Fish were under the boat. And, and it, I forced you to fish. And as a result of it, like the results are just have been incredible. So I'm just so bullish on them. So just start running them. I no joke. I'm launching a contest. I'm going to tease this because you guys are on this session. I'm putting together the ultimate guide to how to run a live art show. I am going to put a contest together in which all you have to do to enter is run a live art show and send it to me and then share it on share it on your socials that you entered. And I'm giving away three subscriptions with like a whole bunch of different bells and whistles. It's probably going to be out at the end of the week or early next week. So there you go. Cool. There's some additional motivation. Cool. Um, and then another thing is um, kind of stacking on top of the live art shows and stuff. So I've got a few prints um, mm -hmm. that I have right now. Um, I've, I've mounted them on foam core, but I, they're printed on metallic uh, paper. Okay. Um, and I've, I've got a few of them in a couple different sizes. Um, and then I've got a few that aren't mounted on foam core mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious because a lot of um, the photos that I have, I don't have prints of, and I'm a little bit hesitant to get prints because the prints I have now I've had for a couple months and they're not selling. Yep. And so I, I'm a little bit nervous. So my question is, um, two things. One, don't worry about it. The most important thing is that you have the sample so that you can show what it's going to look like. Right. And then you could also show the 2d image and early on when you're just trying to figure it out like that and trying to figure out how to sale, have a flash sale in one of the pieces or don't have a flash sale and just, you're starting to sell them. You're starting to market any feedback that you get. If they're not buying, but they give you feedback, just say, Look, I'm trying to fire sell this thing. What do you think is fair? What are you willing to offer? And see if anyone's even willing to offer anything for it. And it could be one of two things. It could be the work is just not good enough. It could be obviously that they're not interested in it, but it could be you just have a product the market doesn't want or your pricing could be off. You'll never know until you really, really push the envelope. But that's how you get, that's how you get to creating the work that the market actually wants by attempting to sell it and trying to get their feedback. So you're, you're on the path. I like what you're doing. Cool. Um, and then... Um kind of a little bit on top of that of the example sizes for the prints that I have. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific size that I should be like kind of doing as like my, like my general. No, let them tell you, let them tell yeah. you. I mean, it'll fall in, it fall into the normal size range, right? Like nobody ever buys big stuff because there's not that many big walls, right? Like, you know, small to medium sized pieces are totally just fine, but you're willing to make a print for anyone that wants any of the pieces. And so, you know, you, if I'm running a show, just, hey, anybody wants one, let me know. I can do some of them in different sizes. Just let me know what size you need. Maybe you're doing a bathroom or the walls are smaller. Or maybe you're doing a living room and you've got specific needs. Just let me know, right? Cool. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, 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 if I, so, sorry, I'm taking up so much no, time. No, no, don't worry. It's what it's for. That's what these are for. Um, so another question that I had was um, in terms of, like, YouTube um doing any sort of like tutorials or, or, or i know someone mentioned doing workshops 
kind of if I wanted to do something like that and then work in some sort of affiliate marketing, is that something that art storefronts can also help me try and figure out is affiliate marketing? Yeah, we could. I don't see anyone using affiliate marketing to sell a tremendous amount of art. I mean, to maybe sell some classes potentially, but I'd have to look at the classes first. But I would, those are, those are tomorrow's problems. Today's problems today. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then um, uh, NFTs. Yeah. Um, is that like, is there a whole different way to approach NFTs and, and selling those versus selling prints? Yeah. So, when he says NFTs, now we're getting into the crypto land. It stands for non-fungible tokens. It's basically kind of like Bitcoin, except you buy a piece. I can get into them and go into them ad nauseum. And here's what I would say. I'm a crypto freak. I love crypto. Well aware of what's going on in the NFT space. Very fascinated by it. 100% think it's going to be the future. But it's also like the California gold rush for most artists and photographers right now. Like, you know, you're sitting around in a bar in Jersey City and someone's like, they found gold in those hills. And the next thing you know, you pack your whole life up and you move out there. Well, the problem is you're not a professional gold miner to begin with. So you're going to go out there and you're going to have a bunch of problems, right? Like if you can't sell your art, your photography in a world that has a whole heck of a lot less friction, i.e. people not needing to own crypto, crypto to purchase your work, you ain't going to just all of a sudden pop into NFTs and start selling a bunch of NFTs. So what I would say is practical advice is if you're a huge tech nerd, I'm a huge tech nerd. It fascinates the hell out of you. Start studying the space, learning about it, listening to some podcasts, but do it with 10% of your marketing time or even less, 5%. And then you can discover whether or not it's worth it for you or not. In the very near short term, I wouldn't waste any time on it. That's general advice. Cool. Awesome. And then uh, I'll just ask uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. um, so someone mentioned something before. Um, I think it was Elizabeth talking about um, maintaining her independence while mm -hmm. um, combining with our storefronts. Yep. So right now, uh, the website that I have, um, it I made it from a template through Wix. I yep. know that... Squarespace is also a thing. Um, I'm curious. Uh, so I, I I signed up to do a demo. Um, it's scheduled to do. I'm scheduled to do it tomorrow. So this might be mm -hmm. something that's answered there. Um, but uh, I'm curious about how the combination um, works. If if our storefronts, if your guys' stuff is completely separate, or if it's like you said, it's a software that integrates with a template that I have. Yeah, no. Like, so it, yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. So you're gonna have to decide whether or not you want to have two sites or wanna, whether you want to have one website. And the the bar for entry that you should just ask yourself is, is the Wix site moving a tremendous art for you now? No. No. Then just get rid of one it. Piece. Then get rid of it. I, had more success with Instagram DMs. Yep, yep. You don't need the Wix site, trust me. We have the website thing figured out. Ours, ours work for a reason. So, just ditch the Wix, point the URL at ours, and, and get going on the marketing. That would be the ball game. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, I do love talking about NFTs, and there's a the CEO and I both are like crypto freaks, and we put in um, there's a YouTube video in the chat you should watch that we, we talked about it a while back. Uh, keep talking about it. I, I'm going down. I'm going down the rabbit hole on it because I'm fascinated by it. But you know, it's, that's what I got to do. I got to make sure something's actually working. Vet it for our uh, for our customers. Get on there. All right, it's gonna go Mariana and then Leon. So Mariana, you're up next. You'll have to unmute. I'll let you know when you get it. Yeah, gotcha. I I don't have a question. I'm just enjoying all the questions. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy to me that, it, but it, it totally works. Um, you know, it's like a, a serendipitous thing of this whole thing. And I'll do that quickly. And then Leon, I'll grab your, I'll grab your question. But in addition to doing these sessions, okay, we have the same things internally with our customers on a biweekly basis. And sometimes we'll have like three, 400 customers on the session staying for like three hours, not asking a question. And you look at that and you're like, what in the world is going on? And there's actually like, there's such a paucity, a scarcity of this type of information out there. And when you hear other artists and photographers asking the questions and then getting the results, it's like, oh, there's just so much to learn from it. And sometimes because I track the stats on this, people will come to like 15, 16, 17 different sessions and never ask a question. I'm so blown, I'm so, I'm so flattered by that on some level and blown away by it, but I'm not, I'm not naive to think it has anything to do with me. It's just like all of these various different questions and scenarios that so many of you have lived out in your careers and then you get to hear the various different answers and I just, you know, I like it. I like it. It makes me happy. So awesome. Um, Leon, you're up next. Perfect. Hi, thanks, Patrick. Yeah. Um, I was just curious to find out, of course, you've got a, a fairly sizable 
um, you know, um, a database. I guess you, you said you got about 5,000 odd artists. Yeah, yeah. Do you have Plus. any way to, you know, to, to get some insights into, at least at a high level in terms of what actually sells? Is it abstract? Is it landscape? Mm -hmm. What are sizes? Um, just to get a get a feel of the market. Now, I know everybody's efforts must be very different. Like mm -hmm. some people must be spending hours, you know, a couple of hours a week, or some people might be spending like, you know, this might be their full time job. So it might be different. But at least from an output standpoint, is there any way you could you could perhaps share uh, some insights in terms of what's actually working for some of the artists? What's the average number of let's say painting sold uh, a week or a month? You know, mm -hmm. some some stats around it. Yeah, I love I, I love this. I, I love this question, and my mind works the same way that yours does. And boy, boy, have I come to learn it's a fool's errand, right? My uh, my wife has her PhD in statistics, and I gotta I honestly have to ask her what the statistical phenomenon is about this particular scenario. But let me give you a, let me give you some some instances. It's a crystal ball question, and the and the premise underpinning the question is flawed. And the premise underpinning the question is that there is some sort of mathematical formula that if you just knew, you could bolt into your business and have a big business, right? And the variations of this are, how many hours a week do I need to work on my marketing and what can I expect? It, it is, what are the best selling sizes? If I just knew what the best selling sizes, then I could put that in mind. If it was the, what are the most important media types? If I just knew what the most important media types and then I added them in my business, it would go great. And you'll find if you do this, there's just no formula that comes out. Everyone's path is so completely different, and I'll and I'll give you like some teeth on it, right? It, it, when I say we think alike, like I'm constantly looking for mathematical formulas that I can extract out of the customer database that'll apply to everyone, right? And I and I look at things like, okay, how many emails do they have on their list? How many social followers do they have? How many sales did they run a year? Can I put those three things into like sort of an algorithm and spit out a number, right? And I've got, a, I've got a guy that's got 1.3 million followers on Instagram. Massive household name and for what he does. Selling his work. I've got a gal that's got 5,000 followers on Instagram, and she is outselling him 20 to 1. 20 to 1. And how the hell do I pull the statistics out of that? And the reality is, is that everybody's niche is utterly, totally, and completely different. Everyone's marketing acumen is completely different. Everyone's likability is different. Everyone has these various different things that are advantageous to them versus others. And there's literally no rhyme or no reason how it goes. What I would say at a macro though, so I, I'm not kidding, like even if I let you in the database and it sounds like you're probably good at math, like you could, you could drop the high and drop the low and try to pull the middle and like, yeah, the sizes would conform, but you don't, you don't need me to tell you the sizes. Like go into any store and look at the various different sizes of art. It's not too big, it's not too small. That's what sells the best. But what I would say is, is that the biggest pitfall that artists and photographers fall into is they create what they want, they create what inspires them, and they do all of that in a vacuum, right? This is the stuff that I wanna create because I love it and it makes me happy. And what do they do? They go and they create that stuff, and then they take it to market. And that's what all of us would do, essentially do, right? Some of the yeah. smartest people I've ever seen completely flip the equation. They don't create anything until they start with demand and work backwards, right? And let me give you a for instance to give that some teeth. Like, it's been said for a long time that Green Bay Packers fans buy their body weight and Green Bay Packer gear on a, on, a, on a yearly basis, right? These people are just diehard fans and, and there's a diehard niche and they're easy to target and market to. So go and create yeah. a bunch of Green Bay art and my guess is, is that you'll have built-in sales right out of the gate, right? So I've seen some artists that have started with demand and worked backwards and got there. And then I've seen other artists that understand this concept of pivoting, right? And the concept of pivoting is you create whatever you want to create and you see how it sells. It might, it might be, boom, dynamite right out of the gates. And the sales might be crickets or something in between. Our tendency when it's crickets is to internalize that as criticism of us. We're not good enough. Art doesn't sell. You try to, you, you try to offset it, right? The smart artist though goes, ah, so I took a shot. That was an arrow. I took a shot with that arrow. It didn't hit the bullseye. Now I gotta go try something new, right? And just to finish it up, when Pablo Picasso died, he had 45,000 unsold pieces in his collection. 45,000. That's a guy at the tail end of that thing that anything with his initials on it, he could have sold for $100,000. And you look at that and you're like, what the heck was he doing that whole time? You know what he was doing? 
he was firing a whole bunch of arrows and some of them didn't hit the bullseye. And you know what he did? That one wasn't good. Let me try something else, right? So that's the advice that I would give. And sadly, there's no mathematical equation. I wish there was. Make life a whole hell of a lot easier for me. No worries. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah. The start with demand and work backwards is so counterintuitive. No one ever does it. Um, okay. What are you saying, Wad? Does Mariana, does she have a question now? Sorry, my team's telling me who you guys have questions because I wasn't I wasn't watching hands. Okay, seems like Mariana does have a question. Okay, I'm gonna mute you, Mariana. Go ahead. Oh, you're not muted yet. Unmuted, but I'll yep, gotcha. My situation is I do uh, pet portraits mm -hmm. commission, mm -hmm. and um, and let me so guess, let me guess, you sell the commissions. <laughs> And you like making the commissions, but you've also realized that it's just trading dollars for hours. In a perfect world, you would really hope that generic Rottweiler owners would buy the commissioned works that you did of Rottweilers. But what you've come to find out is that individual pet owners couldn't give a damn about a generic pet portrait. They want their own. Am I close? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been doing <laughs> this. Right. I've been doing this for a while. Um, yeah, that's one of the the crosses to bear. And I'm going to send you. I'm pulling it up now so I can do a little show and tell. I'm going to send you a customer of ours any pigs portraits she was she was literally prepared to um quit this business because she was so sick and tired of doing the sketches um do i have it now yep i got it hold on i'm pulling it up then i'm gonna do the show and tell so this is her business she calls herself bunny pigs whimsical pet portraits and she offers up these commissions at um, various different points of time and she absolutely destroys it. I mean, like sometimes 40, 50, $60,000 openings when she does the commissions. And she is so sick and tired of doing these things on her own. She was ready to quit the holy game of poker. By the way, I want you to get on her email list and see how this woman does it. She's extremely talented at what she does, very impressive. And she's in the same boat that you are, which is like, all I wanna be able to do is figure out some things I can sell prints of that don't require me to do a new piece every single solitary time. So, you know what we taught her to do? Get understudies that do 80% of the work for her and she does the last 10%. <laughs> and it's working. It's working fantastically well for her. And it's easier said than done, but you have to realize how rare it is to get something in channel working as well as her. Like to have an individual commission sale and get 40 or $50,000 worth of orders, like you can't walk away from that. That is a very difficult thing to do as an artist. And so, you know, I contemplate you know Damien Hurst, you know that author, that, uh, that artist? He's super mm -hmm. famous. He's got like the dots that everybody buys. He doesn't do a single solitary one of the dots paintings. None of them. His understudies do all of them. And his beautiful line is, I love this line. I'm going to quote it right now um, just because I, I just wrote it down the other day. On the artistic ethics of using four studios and 40 assistants to produce Hurst's, uh, which he then signs, and he said, I like the idea of a factory to produce work, which separates the work from the ideas, but I wouldn't like a factory to produce the ideas. Is that guy a genius or what? Amazing. But yes, <laughs> you, you, one, you have to do better at your marketing. Two, I know you don't want to hear this. You have a revenue source that's working with the pets, right? And people are diehard about this thing. So you kind of have to stick with it because you have it working, but you need to try some new things um, to, 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 to be able to branch out and get some print sales that don't require a brand new piece every time. But we can teach you some of those things. Okay. Yeah. I do other things too, but that's, that's what's yeah. it's the bread and butter. money right yeah, now. Yeah. It's the bread and butter of the business. It's a diehard niche, right? You know, I mean, you, you saw what I was talking about before, like start with demand and work backwards. People are, are in love with their pets. It is, it they makes, sure it makes, a, yeah, it makes for an extremely amazing sale, right? Like you have a niche that's diehard, but I get it. You're just like, oh my gosh, I got to do six more of these things, you know, and it's just, duh, 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 it becomes, it becomes rote monotonous at a point. So we can help you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Mariana. Okay, next up is Mario. Let me get you unmuted, Mario. Go ahead. And you'll need to hit your mic icon. I'll let you know when you get it. Looks like you're on. Oh, okay, yep. gotcha. Yeah, can you hear me? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, good. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm uh, research, doing my research. I've been doing art for about two years now. Okay. Um, it's it's digital art. Yeah. Uh, and my question is, uh, I mean, and it's all on... Um, you know, it's on uh, it's on my computer. Mm -hmm. 
uh, do I need that? Do I need to print it out? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I and, need to print it all yeah, out. You, so you need to get some prints the... and, and let me, let me explain it with props. So give me a second. I got a slide over here and grab. The thing is, is like, and, and this is the analogy that I always give. And let's say, let's say that my business was a knife business, right? And we sold those knives door to door and you came in for a job and I was like, all right, Mario, uh, I want to hire you to sell my knives door to door. What would you go door to door with if you were going to be selling knives? Knives. The knives, right? You wouldn't go with the 2D image picture on your cell phone of the knife, would you? No. No, you wouldn't. Then why does every artist think that they can get away with selling a 2D image on a screen? That's not what hangs on the wall. What hangs on the wall is the actual print, right? The actual print has a, a hanging mechanism on the back and some wood, and you can show it off and you can merchandise it, right? And so the 2D artist means nothing at all. It's still just an artist. You just need to get the finished product the finished product hangs on the wall. It's real. It's three-dimensional. You can touch it. You can show it off. There's various different varieties of it. It comes in canvas, gallery wrapped, no frame needed, all of those things. So you really, you have to get some. You, they can be very small size. Do you see, do you see how small size these are? I, mean, I know why these are small size, because they're very handy to show on video, right? They're, they're very, very handy to show on video, right? And so, like, you know, I can, I can do all of these in two seconds. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Mario, I don't know. Have you ever seen an acrylic print? No, Patrick, I have no idea what an acrylic print is. Oh, wonderful. This is one of the latest and greatest media types on, in, in the world, right? So the point is, is that you don't have to go and get your entire archive printed out, but get five of them printed out on the five different media types. And then you say, oh, you like that image? Here's what acrylic looks like. I know this isn't the image, but this is acrylic. You don't need a frame. It's ready to hang, right? I sign the back of them. It's beautiful. It's this thick, and it really hangs nicely on the wall, right? So that's what you have to do. You have to order some samples. Okay, got it. And then, by the way, take them with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you okay. go, right? Like you're at your kid's baseball practice, and someone's asking you about your art. Oh, yeah, come out to the car. Let me show you. Let me show you a couple, right? Okay. Like um, this is what I, you're selling. A... These are the knives. These are the knives. Okay. And, and uh, the fact that, uh, that you are, it's online uh, and it's viewable, is that, is that a good thing or is that, yes. should I? Yes, 100%. Yes, it, okay. need, it needs to be viewable. That, that is for certain. No, it's online currently. I mean, it's, it's my, my, what the, my other platform that I'm using, it's, on, it's, a, it's a state online, I think, through advertising. Yep. Um, what's, a, what's the platform? Okay. Sachi. Sachi, yeah. It's fine that it's on Sachi. Usually what I say is that wherever it is, wherever it is, online or off. If it's bringing you revenue, it can stay there. If it's not bringing you any revenue, pull it off of there. Because what happens is, is that when I search your name in Google right now, the first thing that comes up is Saatchi. And if you start selling directly from your own website and you put your name into Google, I don't want the first thing to be coming up being Saatchi if it's not paying you any money at all, right? No one gives a damn that you're on Saatchi. If it's selling, great, leave it there. If not, get it off. That's if you, sign up, if you sign up for us. But I would rather it be up there than not anywhere, right? You know, at least at least it gives you like a pretty portfolio site, even if none of it's selling. Have you sold a piece on Saatchi? Not yet. Then get it off. If you sign up with us, if you're just going to stay status quo, then keep it up there. Okay, got it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. All right, wonderful. I feel like that was a good session today. I had fun. Um, trying to think if there's anything I, I left out. So I'm going to send you the web page, the video. Um, all of that jazz after the fact and you can look at the links look at the links to the videos look at the links to the live art shows I'm going to be launching this contest to live art shows if you're on the email you will certainly see it uh, and you will get a bunch of notifications on it um, which should be awesome it's going to be a killer contest and all you have to do to enter is run a live art show and I want every one of you to run a live art show because they are the future of selling art and photography online um, Today was a presentation. You got to figure out whether or not we know what the hell we're talking about and if we pique your interest at all. If this is your first time hearing about us, don't worry about it. But if, if your interest is piqued, encourage you requesting a demo. It is not scary. It is essentially test driving the car. Somebody from my team will call you, find out what you do, schedule the Zoom call, and then give you a custom one hour overview of everything that we do, all the bells, all the whistles, all the marketing. You can ask whatever question you want about pricing, how anything works merchant accounts, the print on demand, the marketing, the website set up, the live art show pages, they'll show all of that stuff. Um, so you can, you, can, you can do all of that and it's a really, really easy process. And like, look, they're not pushy salespeople. If you're like, okay, that was cool, don't ever call me again, they will never call you again. 
Um, so don't worry about that. All right, Eric, Eric's got a question about romance marketing, it looks like. I'm going to unmute you, Eric. You have to hit the mic icon somewhere in the, on the bottom of your Zoom thing. Yeah, I would set in on um, Tyler's uh, Zoom meeting, mm -hmm. and um, I had asked him about some of the things that you do to generate your initial email list, mm -hmm. and he brought up the idea of um, romantic marketing, which is getting the attention of um, potential clients without actually selling them yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. So I was curious if you had, you know, whether it's just like, kind of sounded kind of bloggish, where you kind of, he said it's... No, it's not. It's it's not bloggish. Er, early on, early on, it's always a chicken and the egg situation, right? You're like, mm -hmm. oh, I need to market so I can get emails, and you're like, I don't have any emails, so how am I going to start marketing, right? Like, when you first sign up, the 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 distinction between the romance marketing and the selling is really what most artists do is they just try to sell the whole time and they don't post stuff that is non-salesy. And the idea is post a bunch of non-salesy stuff, have a sale. Post a bunch of non-salesy stuff, have a sale. That's the balance, right? But it should be like 10 non-salesy things for every sale thing or even more. So early on, what we do to get you kickstarted is we have some 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 kind of hacky little techniques that center around print giveaways where you're going to auction off a print for people that do this, that, and the other, i.e. get on your email list. And, you know, the print giveaways are like, you know, 40 to $50 shift. And so they're insanely effective early on and spinning up, spinning up some attention. So we've got a bunch of that, but then also... Once everything's set up correctly and you're posting on a regular basis, it happens organically as well. So it's just it's just a combination of that. But we have we have the, we have the chicken and the egg situation solved as, as good as you can, right? Like we you're not wondering what to do. It's just like this 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 this, and we ain't stopping until we get there. So we we, we show you that whole thing. We hold your hand for that whole thing. How much Marvel st How much Marvel stuff do you have, by the way? How much Marvel stuff do you have? A, not, a respectable collection. Yeah, it's yeah. there's 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 a good built-in audience for that. You'll find. Um, yeah. Yeah. Copyright stuff aside, which which could get a little dicey, but that's 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 some good stuff to have for sure. For sure. It sells. Okay. We got some people that do really really well with um with the Marvel stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um. One other quick question, yeah, Patrick. Sure. Okay. Um. Was the idea of having like how prolific do you have to be in order to kind of maximize your platform? Mm -hmm. Like I usually kind of create maybe two or three new pieces a year. And then I've got like a, I guess we would call it a catalog of pieces. Yeah. So I was like, if I'm going to have a sale, I'm not going to necessarily have like 50 pieces. Oh, that doesn't matter. Have. That doesn't matter at all. Honestly, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. It does not matter at all. There's, and again, it goes back to like that. There is no magic formula. There's people that are killing it with, with everything imaginable. Right. Like there's people that have six figure year businesses that are that are largely driven on one piece. Just it. Just one piece. Right. And then there's people that come up with a different piece a day. Like we've got one gal that, no joke, has this technique down where she can paint like a flower painting in like twelve minutes and she'll sell like two hundred and fifty of them for Mother's Day. Right. And it's like I, I got so many different stories like that and they're just they, they span the gamut. So you're don't worry about all these downstream things. None of the downstream things matter. And you don't even know what the true problems that you need to be worried about are until you start marketing and getting people to purchase and getting people to tell you and give you the feedback. And so don't be like, everyone loves to stress on the things about like the analogy that I give is like your boat is in a, in a shipyard on the edge of the water. Right. And the only thing that we need to figure out is whether or not the damn boat floats. If the boat floats, then we can start worrying about all the other things. But you know what everyone does? They leave the boat on the shore and they're like, I got to just put one more coat of varnish on the deck and then I got to go get some curtains for the galley and then I, I, I need to uh, make sure that I get one more sail. For no, no, you don't need to do any of that nonsense. Push the damn boat in the water and let's see if it floats, right? If it floats, then we can start worrying about all these other things. And you know, pushing the boat in the water is launching the business, start working on the marketing, try to get some sales, see what people are into. And like, look, they might gravitate towards something that you didn't even think was going to be popular. And all of a sudden, that's what you're doing, right? So those are the types of things that happen as a result of, of executing. Cool. Cool. Thanks. All right. My headphones are starting to hurt my ears, which means I'm going to need to get a new pair, which depresses me. I've had these things for like years and years and years. Um, all right, guys, I think we'll leave it there. Um, thanks for coming. Good session. I really enjoyed your questions. Um, enjoyed talking to all you guys and yeah hope to see you on another one um and i'm going to send you a link to the podcast i really think you guys should subscribe to the podcast and it's on everything it's a video podcast and audio podcast but 
Like I give them away the store on that thing and it's all the latest and greatest learnings and you can listen to it for free, zero commitment, and you can really get a, a pretty decent education. And we always give the store away for free because no one ever takes any damn action on anything, do they? Um, no, they don't. So if you guys are watching on Facebook, I'll put the link in there for it. Otherwise, it's here in the Zoom chat. Otherwise, if you were on the Zoom, I'll send you the link after the fact. Everybody, have a great rest of your week and hope to see you on the inside.